we will look at divisibility by 2 I and mean, we look at it in two ways one is generally how we do it which is uh, right, looking for a pattern and writing things down and I think that's how we mostly do it call it even numbers and the other is maybe do it a little more rigorously to understand if you have any number let's say a two digit number three digit number why is it that divisibility by two is only about what is left in the one space okay so one of the ways that uh, is most often used is that is to just write down all the all the even numbers you can say okay this is uh, tables of two and then we're just writing what are all the next expressions and just to point out to children that you know see if you look at the ones place the pattern is repeating and so all the numbers that we have in that are multiples of 2 will always have in the ones place a 0 or 2 or 4 or 6 or 8 and that's how we will identify an even number. So this doesn't have proof. This is an extension. If you look at a pattern and then you say see this is what I noticed from the pattern. So if we take let's say a 3 digit number then in a 3 digit number like 524 you have ones, you have tens, you have hundreds. So, you can play again. So, if you have a ten, right, the tens can already be expressed as two sets of fives. So, I can take a ten, and maybe I should do it the other way. First I should do it like this. I use ones to make a ten. Okay, so every ten is always two pairs of fives, which is what even number is. I can make it in two rows. So any number of tens that I give, I will just continue to make more rows of five, uh, more packs of two rows of five. So, the 10 itself is divisible by 2. So, any number of 10s you put, 2, 10, 3, 10, 5, 10, 10, 10, will always be divisible by 2. Same way, if I take a 100, then it's 10 times 10. So, which means I'm just putting 10 rows of this. I don't even need to look at a 100. But of course, I can think of it as, I can split it as 50, 50. So, it already is divisible by 2. So, I don't really need to look at the tens or its multiples which is the hundreds and thousands and ten thousands because they are all multiples of ten. Uh, I only need to look at the ones which may or may not you may or may not be able to put in a in a row. So if I have four I can put and but if I have five I will not be able to put. So this is the reason why we can only look at the ones and tell if a number is divisible or not divisible by two. So I'm just going to continue the same logic with what about when I want to divide by 4 ok so if I take a 10 a 10 is not divisible by 4 okay. but if I take a 100 a 100 is divisible by 4 you will get 25 so you will get 4 rows of 25 so anything after a 100 if I go to a 1000 I will get 250 10 rows of that right? so hundreds, thousands, ten thousands all of those are divisible by 4 so the only thing I really need to look at to see if a number is divisible by 4 or not is the tens and the ones so if this number 24 is divisible by 4 then the number is divisible by 4 because the hundreds, thousand, ten thousands are always divisible by 4 so we have seen that when it is divisibility by 4 I just need to look at the tens and ones because that's the only question now if I look at by 8 I already, when I divided 100 by 4, I got 25. So when I divide it by 8, I get 12.5. Now that's not a whole number. But if I think of a 1000, that same 12.5 becomes 125. So it's fine. So 1000, 10,000 and so on. 8 can divide it easily. I don't even need to look at those digits to know divisibility by 8. I only need to look at the last 3 digits. If these last three digits are divisible by 8, then the whole number is divisible by 8.
that's it so if i look at the last three digits which is hundreds tens and ones if these three are divisible by 8 the whole number no matter how long is divisible by 8